So without further delay, I would like to uh, pass to the, the last speaker, uh, uh, Professor Aris Sevet. He is the founder and the director of the International Emergency Medicine Education Program. And uh, uh, he will uh, present to introduce his uh, project uh, in the pre-recorded videos. But after the, the, uh, his presentation, he will join in person uh, uh, by Zoom to, uh, during the panel discussions. So uh, uh, the piece uh, uh, allows some time for us to play the videos. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Wherever you are watching this important webinar on emergency medicine education in Asia. I'm Dr. Chevik. I am an emergency medicine academician working at United Arab Emirates University College of Medicine and Health Sciences. I am also vice chair of the IFAM Core Curriculum and Education Committee and board member of the Asian Society for Emergency Medicine. I admit that it is a great honor to be part of this webinar as an emergency medicine educator. It is a privilege that IEM Education Project is also taking part in this activity. In this presentation, I will give some insights and details about the International Emergency Medicine Education Project. For the audience unfamiliar with this project, it is a global initiative focusing on undergraduate emergency medicine education. It is first supported by the United Arab Emirates University College of Medicine and Health Sciences and endorsed by International Federation for Emergency Medicine and consequently by the other regional societies such as Asian Society for Emergency Medicine. The International Emergency Medicine Education Project is a global initiative aiming to promote emergency medicine for medical students and provide free educational resources for trainees and educators. This is what IEM is built for. It was the year 2014-15, a friend from the US and another from Singapore, we discussed that there are too many variations in undergraduate emergency medicine training in medical schools around the world, even considerable differences in the same country regardless of the level of development of emergency medicine in that country. In addition, in the era of the growing free open access medical education movement, there are limited resources that medical students could reach easily and freely. Online emergency medicine resources for medical students were limited to the specific country and were not comprehensively covering the topics that students may need. Therefore, we wanted to create a platform that can serve every medical student worldwide who needs more resources and guidance on emergency medicine. With this starting point, we reached out to the International Federation for Emergency Medicine and explained the necessity and plan. Then, with their endorsement, we contacted emergency physicians worldwide who could help with this initiative. We reached out almost 160 interested physicians, students, and residents and completed a clerkship book having 106 chapters with 133 contributors from 19 countries in 2018. This was the primary resource that we built our online platform. We also aim to create our resources and platforms according to the International Undergraduate Emergency Medicine Education recommendations to serve a wide range of needs. Therefore, we used IFM and SAEM's Undergraduate Emergency Medicine Curriculum recommendations to shape our resources. Why is IEM important to us? It is not just because we build it and solve the demand. We think that this platform can also be a hub between the students and the emergency medicine specialty and its global organizations. I think we all should be honest in saying that undergraduate emergency medicine education is a forgotten area of many emergency medical care systems. Almost all countries that develop emergency medicine focus mainly on residency training and improving the emergency health care system. However, many countries ignore the importance of undergraduate emergency medicine education, lacking standardization of this education and limiting the resources. Therefore, it is not the wrong to say that undergraduate emergency medicine education is a stepchild of emergency medicine in many countries. As IEM contributors, we believe that this misconception should be changed everywhere. We can create awareness little by little, but as a steady movement to raise this concern on every platform we can reach. There are many countries 
where new graduates take care of sick patients in emergency departments and pre-hospital environments. Those countries mainly do not have developed emergency medical care system. We strongly think that if we connect with students globally, explain our specialty, show them good examples, and train them properly, we can create a young healthcare army who understand the fundamentals of emergency medicine and act accordingly, regardless of their future specialty. Eventually, emergency care may improve in every country. Let me give some details about IEM, starting with contributors. In the beginning, there were 133 contributors from 19 countries. Today, we reached 229 contributors from 41 countries, including faculty members, attending physicians, residents, and medical students, and the numbers are increasing day by day. Although the majority of our contributors are chapter authors, we have a considerable amount of blog authors and IEM live session participants. We have multiple resources that students and their educators can use. Our main hub for resources is the IEM-student.org website, where students can find chapters for chief complaints, specific disease entities, laboratory and imaging modalities, and procedures. Popular chapters are also in audio format, which students can listen on the go. There is an MCQ page, which includes 100 NBME type questions. Each question includes a detailed explanation of the options and provide decision-making information to reach the correct answer. We also publish blog posts from others from various countries and backgrounds on the website. Receiving different opinions worldwide is a great experience for both sides. The platform has a page where we share our live sessions and interviews with emergency medicine experts, residents, and students. In addition to resources on the website, we also provide a clinical image archive on Flickr, where users can find various copyright-free clinical images which can be used in presentations or assessments. Chapter or event audios and podcasts can be found on the SoundCloud platform. According to our students, it is very common to listen to chapters while traveling. And finally, all video content is easily reachable on IEM's YouTube channel. IEM live sessions, expert opinion videos, clinical videos are all on the same platform and free to use for educational purposes. While we were providing these resources, we need to prioritize our opening a course platform because of the pandemic's effect on the undergraduate emergency medicine training. Many colleges around the world canceled the clinical rotations and some canceled their training sessions because of the shortage of teaching faculty. After a couple discussions with the IFM Core Curriculum and Education Committee Chair, Dr. James Kwan, we decided to move faster and open the IEM-course.org platform. The first course was provided in collaboration with Lecturio Company. They responded positively to our request and freed up around 200 videos for our usage. We arranged videos to create a four-week emergency medicine course along with the chapters on the main website. Currently, we provide five courses on this platform. These are two ultrasound courses, one COVID-19 clinical readiness course, and one research fundamentals course. We all know that methods of learning medicine have changed dramatically over the last decade. Web-based learning somehow has revolutionized medical education by allowing information to be shared rapidly without borders supporting individual needs. Advancements in web technology encourage physicians to participate globally and benefit from collective intelligence. After the term Free Open Access Medical Education, which is FOAM, was established, online medical learning gained fresh momentum and vibrant digital community was born. Finally, through social media, interaction within this global community reached its peak. Emergency medicine and critical care community in particular has been the leader of the Free Open Access Medical Education movement. However, the use of form in undergraduate medical education is lagging behind postgraduate education. This lag may be attributed to the topics covered by the Free Open Access Medical Education websites, research and technical aspects which appeal more to postgraduate trainees are overrepresented compared with the core concepts that are of interest to medical students. By recognizing the scarcity of free online emergency medicine resources providing fundamental topics for medical students, we thought that 
opening a platform where students can learn and engage with our specialty could address the need. One of the important ideas behind the creation was the low and lower middle income countries. Staffing emergency department is a priority in low and middle income countries. However, training medical students needs more manpower than or more resources than what those countries can actually provide. If the institutions in these countries do not have freely available educational resources such as registration to online platforms for medical students, it is not easy for these students to register and cover the expenses for their training. Therefore, we know that uh, free open access medical education may benefit low and lower middle income countries. Of course, free open access medical education can facilitate international collaboration by removing geographical boundaries, giving access to otherwise expensive information, saving educators time for hands-on training and making information available at the point of care. During the testing period of the platforms between July and August 2018, we'll look for some usage statistics. There were increasing monthly trend in all platforms. Image archive and website were viewed the most. All platforms were dominantly viewed from Asia and North America. In addition, high and upper middle income countries viewed resources more than low and lower middle income countries and majority of the viewers were from non-English speaking countries. Initially, we thought that the views of the low and lower middle income countries could be reasonably close to other countries. However, their views were 0.4 and 5.2% respectively. 94.4% of the views were from the high and higher middle income countries. A previous study which reviewed approximately 19 million views of 12 free open access medical education blogs found that views from high income countries constitute approximately three quarters of the total. Our results were way above this level and it was not IEM's first aim to reach these countries at the beginning. Online learning was heralded as a feasible solution to challenges of medical education in resource-limited context. But in actuality, the dissemination of form remains limited in the low and lower middle income countries. A global approach using electronic learning was suggested to reduce the dependence on educators in classroom activities and increase the contact hours on bedside educational sessions with medical students. However, the impact of form on Limix was below expectation for several reasons, infrastructure related problems such as limited access to computers and the internet and slow internet speed, system related problems such as lack of systematic curriculum based approach and general lack of awareness of free open access medical education. Information and communication technology skills hinder uh, free open access medical education dissemination in low and lower middle income countries. Similar to previous reports, the engagement from lower and low income countries with IEM education project was limited. This may be a reflection of the above constraints. The IEM education project tried to improve collaborations with various countries and regions to address this issue. We worked on a diversity of contributors in terms of regional representations and levels from students to faculty members. Currently, when we look at our IEM-student.org and IEM-course.org platform usage stats, 228 countries and territories used our resources. Low and lower middle income country views reach 26.2% compared to 5.6% in 2018. The main reason for this improvement was the views from lower middle income countries. Although we didn't use a very intense strategy, paying attention to small details improved our reach to students or trainees living in those countries. Similarly, some region views percentage increased, such as Africa, South America, or Oceania. Asia's view percentage, however, didn't change that much. It was 39.6% and slightly decreased to 27.7%. So we are still quite happy about the interest coming from the Asian countries. We have 49 countries uh, and territories from the Asia and if we look at the views from Asia, here are the top 10 countries as view percentages. India, of course, is leading this group with 28.2%. I want to give one more ex example of users from the iem-course.org platform which provides four weeks 
of an online course for medical students. This course uh, at the beginning is designed to decrease the load of didactic teaching from educators' shoulders during the pandemic and help students receive information when they want. As I mentioned earlier, we have almost 200 video lectures in this course, including mini quizzes, final assessment, and completion certification. Currently, we have multiple colleges implemented this course in their emergency medicine clerkship around the world. As of today, we have 5,346 registrations worldwide and 51.7 of them are female. The majority of the registrations are medical students and interns. Interestingly, the majority of registrants were from Asia with 48.2%, Asia followed by North America and Africa. In Asia, almost 80% of the participants mentioned that the emergency medicine clerkship is a mandatory rotation in their institution. Uh, I think this is an amazing, uh, amazing level. And also their confidence level before the course about emergency medicine topics was the second highest in, among the all registrants. For this course, the top five countries in Asia were Indonesia, India, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Pakistan. So we know that all our platforms somehow reach the students in need, and we are so grateful to work with all our contributors to improve undergraduate emergency medicine education around the world and promote emergency medicine. So what are the future plans of IEM Education Project? We will continue collaborating and look for new partnerships with global, regional, and national societies. Recently, we completed IFM Medical Student Symposium during the ISAM 2022. The idea of organizing IFM Medical Student Symposium came to our mind while we are meeting with student representatives in emergency medicine perspective of medical students around the world IEM TV live sessions. One of the sessions was dedicated to Asian students, and you can watch this episode in our YouTube channel. Basically, the session include three students from the three different countries, and they share their experiences and expectations from emergency medicine. We also look for other collaboration opportunities with regional societies. And I thank the Asian Society for Emergency Medicine uh, for organizing this uh, education event and making us a part of it. We will continue to be the voice of medical students and educators around the world in order to improve undergraduate emergency medicine education and use the IEM TV platform for the live sessions to reach a wider audience. So we invite Asian experts and students to be part of these live sessions to share their experience, expertise, and wisdom regarding undergraduate emergency medicine. We will start our live sessions again in September 2022. Currently, we completed the topic selection process of the second edition of IEM Emergency Medicine Collection book. We are looking for contributors from Asia, and we expect to publish the first chapters online around November and December of this year and complete the all chapters by the end of the first half of 2023. In addition to current five courses provided in the IEM-course.org platform, we will create new courses in 2023. So if you are interested in creating free, massive, open online courses for medical students, and if you have a plan and looking for some education platform to share it, we can work together and help medical students around the world. Of course, we use social media, particularly Twitter, to announce our activities and blog posts, chapters, courses, and other resources. If you follow us on our Twitter account, which is at IEM underscore student, you will be aware of all the newest activities and resources we have. I think one of the unique things about the IEM Education Project is that it is not a product of one person or a specific group from a country. Anyone who believes that undergraduate emergency medicine education is important and has something to share with others can be part of our incredible international team consisting of the contributors from students to residents, residents to attending physicians and faculty members. So please feel free to reach us through our email or the website and encourage your trainees to contribute to this global education in initiative. IEM Education Project wants to be a hub between medical students and emergency medicine specialty provide more free resources for medical students and educators and promote emergency medicine worldwide.
Yes, I guess this is all I want to say in my presentation. On behalf of the IEM Education Project, IFM Core Curriculum and Education Committee, and my university, I thank all users and contributors for their amazing support so far, and we are looking for more contributors and collaboration opportunities in the future. Thank you very much.